sing praises to the Lord, for He is good. As we gather here, let us celebrate God's unbounding love for each and every one of us. Hi, prayer family. This is Liz, along with the rest of the team. Thank you for joining us today on the Feast of St. Luke, a favorite of mine. After all, I named my son after him. Let us begin as we do all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. What I Seek, based on Psalm 29. One thing only do I desire of the Lord, that I may seek and live in God's presence. I have known his shelter from threatening storms, a father's love shining with grace and mercy. To live with God is to live with love, blessed with peace, welcoming the lost to the protection of his home. To live with God is to abide with beauty that nurtures the soul. So one thing have I asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to worship in his temple. To bring silence into my days that I may hear his voice. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. Verses 1 and 2. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Today is the feast day of St. Luke the Evangelist. He's the author of one of the four Gospels, and he's given credit for recording the events of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles. St. Luke was one of the four evangelists, but not one of the twelve apostles. He never met Jesus in person. He came to know Jesus by talking to eyewitnesses to the events in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Hearing the stories, helped Luke to become a believer. Every one of the four Gospels has a unique perspective, is written for a specific audience, and relates certain details and stories that the other Gospels don't have. St. Luke likely wrote for a non-Jewish crowd. In his Gospel, Luke helps us to know how concerned Jesus was for the sick, the poor, and anyone in need of help, mercy, and forgiveness. Luke tells us that Jesus came to save all people. Through Luke's gospel, we learn how compassionate and caring Jesus was. Some of the most famous stories that were ever told are from Luke's gospel, the ones that are most familiar to us, like the Good Samaritan, or the Prodigal Son, or the woman who washes, uses her hair to wash Jesus' feet. There are six miracles and 18 parables in Luke's gospel that aren't found in any of the other gospels. Luke also has a special connection with the women in Jesus' life, especially Mary. It's only in Luke's gospel that we hear the story of the Annunciation, Mary's visit to Elizabeth, including the Magnificat, the presentation, and the story of Jesus' disappearance in the temple as a young boy. It's Luke we have to thank for the scriptural parts of the Hail Mary, 
like Hail Mary, full of grace, spoken to her at the Annunciation, or Blessed are you and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus, spoken by her cousin Elizabeth. Reading Luke's gospel gives us a good idea of Jesus' character as one who loved the poor, wanted the door to God's kingdom open to all, and who respected women and saw hope in God's mercy for everyone. Luke's Acts of the Apostles is like a diary of the early church. Acts is often told from a first-person perspective, and he uses the word we. It's to Luke especially that we're indebted to for our knowledge of the Pentecost and the workings of the Holy Spirit on the apostles. Luke was most likely a disciple of St. Paul. In his writings, Paul mentions a Luke who accompanied him on his missionary journey. And when Paul was imprisoned in Rome, he was abandoned by all of the other followers except for one. In his second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verse 11, he says, Only Luke is with me. Today's scripture highlights the need for laborers in the fields. And St. Luke provides an example of one way that all of us can answer that call. Like Luke, we need to be willing to share the story, the story of how Jesus has touched our life, the story of the good news of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. We can do it with words, and we can show it in our interactions with others. So think for a minute. How has knowing Jesus changed you? What difference has he made in your life? Let's look for an opportunity to share that story with someone today in celebration of the life of St. Luke. Together, prayer family, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. We ask that you will guide our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Please stay with us throughout the day and help us navigate whatever comes our way. In trust, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are so very grateful you joined us here at the God Minute. Thank you for praying with us. May the love of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over us this day. Amen. Before we end today, our annual All Souls Mass is again on November 2nd this year, just two weeks away. Please check the app blog on our website for all the information and links to upload a picture of your loved ones to be included in this special Mass said by Father Ron. Have a wonderful day, prayer family. Thanks again for listening. Until we meet tomorrow, stay blessed. Mm